How do you undervolt and optimize an Intel Raptor Lake CPU? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you troubleshoot and optimize your system to keep your PC running like a pro. It's Not Rocket Science, and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, our focus will be on how to undervolt and optimize an Intel Raptor Lake CPU to increase performance, something every Intel PC gamer and enthusiast should know how to do. Now that Intel has released a final fix for the recent stability issues, it's a good time to update your BIOS and optimize your system. As with my previous optimization guides, I'll walk you through how to do this the easy way. No complicated hardcore overclocking in BIOS required. And don't worry, with Intel default settings selected and motherboard enhancements disabled, there is no risk to your CPU. So stay tuned as I guide you through how to tweak your Raptor Lake CPU the right way. The 14900K has been Intel's top performing consumer chip since its launch in late 2023. And based on benchmarks against the new Intel Core Ultra 9 285K that looks like it will continue to be for some time. A question that many of you have asked me recently is how do you unlock the performance of a 14900K? As with my recent AMD tweak guides, there are a few important tweaks that you should consider making in order to unlock the true potential of any Raptor Lake CPU. The first is to install a kit of high-speed RAM and turn XMP on. For the Intel LGA 1700 socket, performance increases with memory speed. However, memory stability becomes an issue at higher speeds, especially especially with 4 DIMM motherboards, and is highly dependent on the quality of the CPU Integrated Memory Controller, or IMC. So I typically select a memory speed of 7200 mega transfers per second for i7 and i9 processors if I have a 4 DIMM motherboard, while I push for 8000 mega transfers per second on 2 DIMM motherboards such as the Apex Encore. There is no guarantee that these speeds will be stable, so I strongly encourage you to run a memory stability tool like Kahoo to check. If your system is unstable, you can try increasing the DRAM VDD and VDDQ voltages by small increments to see if it helps. For my test system, I typically have to increase both VDD and VDDQ from 1.4 to 1.41 volts to achieve stability. And you may also have to tweak the memory controller voltage as well. While making adjustments, I would recommend running Kahoo for 30 minutes to do a quick stability check. But once you're done tweaking, I would run it for 24 hours just to make sure. In addition to turning XMP on in BIOS, you should also consider adjusting your memory subtimings. You can watch someone like Buildzoid on actually hardcore overclocking to learn how to do this manually but most motherboards now come with automatic memory tweaking options that usually do a decent job. For ASUS motherboards, there is an option called XMP Tweaked that when enabled, tightens the memory subtimings beyond XMP1. In addition, a subtiming tweak that helps boost performance and reduce system latency is to increase the DRAM refresh interval to 65-535. This will work on most CPUs and is a common tweak used by pros to help extract max performance from a system. If you do decide to make these tweaks, I would highly recommend running a memory stability tool like Kahoo to make sure that your system is stable. The second thing you should consider doing is undervolting your CPU. This can be done directly in BIOS by modifying options such as CPU load line calibration and actual VRM core voltage. However, a much easier way is to do it directly in Windows by downloading the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility or XTU tool. When you first load XTU, you will be presented with the basic view and you may notice a yellow lightning bolt next to the core voltage offset option. Most motherboards have undervolt protection enabled by default. So if you see the yellow lightning bolt, you will first need to go into BIOS to disable it. For an ASUS motherboard, you can click on Tweakers Paradise and change Undervolt Protection to Disabled. Boot back into Windows, load Intel XTU and the yellow lightning bolt should no longer be there, allowing you to modify the core voltage offset. You can then input a negative core voltage offset in increments of negative 0.005 volts, with my final offset of negative 0.02 volts shown here. I recommend testing at each negative 0.005 volt increment until you find an optimum. You can use the Run Benchmark option with in XTU, however, I've found it to give different results with each run, so if you plan to use it, then run it three times and take an average. Once you find an optimum, I recommend running a more comprehensive tool like Cinebench or OCCT to see if your performance actually increased. This tweak is highly dependent on silicon quality, so it can take some time to get right. Once you're done tweaking the voltage, you can go to settings at the top and then place a tick in the box next to restore tuning after reboot to make sure that these settings load when you reboot your PC. I did try increasing the performance core ratio and efficient core ratio as well, but they had no meaningful impact on performance because the CPU was power limited. You could of course increase the power limits beyond the Intel defaults, but I wouldn't recommend doing that given the recent stability issues. If you want to extract max performance, you will also need to make sure that you select the right Intel default power delivery profile in BIOS. One of the mitigations that Intel released to help fix the recent instability issues was to define default settings to avoid elevated power delivery to the processor. For a Core i9-14900K, there are typically two 
two profiles to select from in BIOS, the Performance Profile and the Extreme Profile. The Extreme Profile will typically be selected by default. For the ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi 2 motherboard that I use for this video, I got better performance by running the Performance Profile. This is somewhat counterintuitive, so I recommend testing it for yourself in a tool like Cinebench or OCCT to see which one offers better performance. One thing you may have read online is that you need to turn off the E-Cores in order to extract max performance in games. For an ASUS motherboard, you can go into the Advanced menu in BIOS and select CPU Configuration. You can then scroll down to the Active Efficient Cores and change it from All to Zero. Save and exit, and when you boot into Windows, your system will just be using the eight performance cores. To check if it helps improve performance in games, I ran some benchmarks. I selected five popular titles to test, Total War Warhammer 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and Black Myth Wukong. The results were somewhat mixed. For Total War Warhammer 3, there is a significant benefit in 1% lows at all resolutions, but only a relatively small boost in average FPS at 1080p. For Cyberpunk 2077, there was actually a decrease in 1% lows at all resolutions with E-Cores off. Whereas for Microsoft Flight Simulator and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, there was a decrease in performance with E-Cores off at all resolutions. However, for Black Myth Wukong, there was a small benefit to turning the E-Cores off for both the 1% lows and average FPS at all resolutions. So there is some benefit to turning the E-Cores off, but not in all games and not at all resolutions. In fact, when I tested this across my entire benchmark suite, I found that it was overwhelmingly better to run the games with E-Cores turned on. The the final tweak that you should consider making to extract max performance from your Intel CPU is to change your power plan in Windows. Open up Control Panel, click on Hardware and Sound, and then click on Power Options. You should select the Gain Turbo High Performance option to ensure that your CPU cores don't go to sleep while gaming. There may be situations where selecting the Balance Plan is better, such as when you want to reduce power consumption, but overall the Gain Turbo option will result in higher average performance. So in summary, the tweaks that I recommend making to extract max performance from your Intel Raptor Lake CPU are 1. Install high-speed RAM, turn XMP on, and adjust your memory subtimings. 2. Use the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility to undervolt your CPU. 3. Select the Intel Performance Power Profile in BIOS. 4. Leave the E-Cores enabled and five, set Windows power plan to game first. The impact of these tweaks on performance is summarized in this table, starting with the lowest impact and ending in the largest. When implemented together, the boost in performance is greater than 5%, which is good. To extract more performance from these tweaks, you would have to increase the power limits beyond the Intel defaults. However, this isn't something I would recommend given the recent stability issues. One important point to emphasize is that the performance boost that you are able to achieve will depend upon silicon quality. There is no guarantee that you your Raptor Lake CPU will be stable with all of these tweaks enabled. After you do each tweak, I would highly recommend running a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench or OCCT and running a memory stability tool like Kahoo to make sure your system is stable. If at any point you find that your CPU is not stable, then back off on that tweak and retest. Hopefully this helps you extract max performance from your Raptor Lake CPU. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program. Bye for now.